This video is to show an operation a semi-automatic two-cavity two-overmold insert mold for our Morgan Industries G100T injection molding machine. Our hope is to show the ease and speed of the Morgan press and to give an overview of the mold design using the semi-auto mold. The product shown is a universal key we supply for a line of automotive locking caps used primarily in the diesel market. We initially made the keys using a single cavity, single overmold insert manual mold for the Morgan Press, but due to a mishap, we destroyed it, which forced a new mold build in order to continue production. We mold about 5,000 to 6,000 units per year so it made sense to replace the manual mold for a two-cavity semi-auto mold ultimately to reduce production cost and the effort required to produce the keys. Working at a laborious pace we could mold about one single key per minute using the manual mold whereas using the semi-auto mold we can mold two keys at about every 30 seconds while sitting down with no hassle of manually opening and charging the mold. A quick overview of the molding process shows the two stainless steel overmold inserts carefully placed in the bottom mold plate that is fastened to the bottom platen. The safety shield is pulled down and the mold clamp knob is pushed. Once the mold is fully closed as told by the knock of the overset platen clamp, the injection knob is pushed. The injection molding process is then started as the plastic is pushed into the cavities of the mold by the injection ram in its downward travel. It takes about seven seconds for the plastic to set firmly in the mold after the injection process, which allows time for the ram to reset up into its static position. The mold is opened and the bottom platen is lowered when the mold clamp knob on the face of the machine is pulled out. As the bottom platen is reset to the lowest point of its travel, Stationary knockout rods are pushed up relative to the downward moving platen. The knockout rods make contact with the ejection plate sandwiched inside the bottom mold unit, and the ejector pins are pushed through the bottom mold plate. The keys are ejected from the mold and held in place for the operator to unload the mold for the next cycle. Once the unit has the overmold inserts reloaded in the bottom mold plate, the cycle is repeated. The ejection pins are recessed back into their flush position as the knockout rods are removed from engagement with the ejection plate. The ejector pins are retained in their flush position by the lock nut carefully set on the bottom side holding the ejection plate. The upper mold is fastened to an in-house machine sealing plate. This sealing plate is held in location to the upper platen by four 3 8 inch shoulder bolts. This assembly allows the upper mold plate to move up and against the injection nozzle when the mold is clamped shut. The sealing plate is not necessary, but employed in this assembly for slight relocation adjustments in pursuit of an exact fit between the ejection nozzle and upper mold plate. Normal variations in the manufacturing processes result in the injection nozzle being out of center relative to the bolt pattern in the upper platen. This phenomenon can be quickly corrected using oversized clearance holes for the screws that secure the upper mold plate to the ceiling plate. The ceiling plate can also be used to adapt smaller upper mold plates which cannot utilize the bolt pattern in the upper platen. The mold was built using 6061 aluminum flat bar and machined all in-house. In addition, small diameter 303 stainless steel rods were used for the ejector pins. The ejector pins were made in-house to keep the mold assembly inexpensive. A hot rolled mild steel plate was used for the bottom okay of the ejection plate assembly to resist the deflection of the light impact loading 
Due to the knockout rods pushing the ejector pins up at the bottom platen's lowest point of travel. It is my belief that the design of this semi-auto mold set is about the simplest, least expensive design that can readily be depended on for production use on the Morgan Press, and we would readily use it on any new parts that justify production quantities and the lower production cost of a semi-automatic mold. Thank you for watching this video.